Broken Hill, Australia's last frontier town. Location for the most expensive Australian film ever made, Mad Max 2. Here, production offices, facilities, and personnel are going 24 hours a day, seven days a week, while the location crew prepares a futuristic desert outpost for a special kind of 21st century warfare. The set is a major achievement for producer Byron Kennedy. Probably the most expensive set built in Australia, though. Mm -hmm. It's certainly the biggest. Mm -hmm. When we first arrived here by helicopter and saw it, it was just stunning, staggering. And uh, as a result of that, we started the film very high, very up, because we were just so impressed with what we'd seen the art department have built. The custom-designed automobiles and motorcycles that will clash in the gas-starved, not-too-distant future of Mad Max 2 are the result of months of collaboration between production designers, automotive engineers, science fiction artists, and stunt drivers. In a nightmare vision of tomorrow, this armada will terrorize a decaying civilization. Men behind these modern chariots of war are the stuntmen. Under the command of director George Miller, they prepare to bring the doomsday combat of Mad Max 2 to life before specially prepared shockproof cameras. I hit the buggy upside down. The motorbike crashes into it. The rider goes over the top. We cut there, and I come flying along in this crash into the bike and into the buggy and then into the ditch. The stunt has not gone according to plan. Ask Kim. Director George Miller, who is trained as a doctor, examines stuntman Guy Norris. His injuries will not permit him to return to the production. Norris was, of course, supposed to land safely in the most reliable and advanced cushion yet devised, a huge mound of empty cardboard boxes. As the crew prepares to move to a new location, stunt director Max Aspen explains what went wrong. It's a very dangerous stunt, and it's a, it's a type of stunt that is completely unpredictable. And if you don't leave the bike before the impact, then the bike takes the impact with you, and then your body's got no control. Once you start spinning like that, you can't control. You've got to send yourself through the air and then tuck. But once you start spinning, there's no... Yeah, so I